and it, it is about privilege to be sharing with you something that I enjoy doing uh, in my clinical practice that is uh, work with lithium dye silicate. Uh, I'm going to share with you my Emax diaries. Now, uh, first things first, guys. When we talk about Emax, all right, demand me kya hamare? Okay. We're talking about the strength of Emacs as against what we potentially believe is the weakness of Emacs. So what is the strength of Emacs? The strength of Emacs, of course, is aesthetic appeal. Uh, Emacs will give you the most good-looking, cosmetic, aesthetic restorations. Right? But remember, we always say that there is a cost to pay if you want beauty. And the cost is in the form of a weakness, which is nothing but the lack of strength. Having said that, do we not see couples where strength and aesthetics do combine with each other? And believe me, friends, that is where lithium disilicate or E-Max comes into play. At the beginning of this presentation, I'm going to share with you three reasons all right, three reasons why I am personally, if I may say, a little biased towards the use of lithium disilicate in my practice. The first one is lithium disilicate gives you the ability to bond a restoration to the underlying tooth structure. Remember, it's a glassy material and glass can be etched. And because it can be etched, it can be bonded. Dr. Manish very rightly uh, told all of us that zirconia, although it can be bonded to the underlying tooth structure, the bond is never a true bonding. Why? Because zirconia is a metal. And remember, metals cannot be etched. Etching happens only on glass. Right? And as a matter of fact, the etching and bonding principle is what makes a glass ceramic so very strong. Yes. You heard it correct. Glass ceramics are very, 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 very strong. Why do I say this? Uh, if I go into a, a, a number, 350 to 400 megapascals, that is average what they say is a compressive strength of um, lithium disilicate, which means if there is a bite force as heavy, it will crumple, it will break. Zirconia, on the other hand, is at the other extreme. It is extremely strong, which means it will not break at all. All right, but remember one thing. In my head, Emacs is like, Popeye the Sailor Man. Oh, oh. The moment Popeye gets spinach, he's no longer that weak, fragile creature. He's this real powerful guy. And the same stands for lithium disilicate. The moment lithium disilicate meets a resin cement and is bonded to the underlying tooth structure, it creates what is called as the mono blocking effect. It's like, we're all one happy family. We do not want to leave each other. So remember, although glass ceramic by itself is weak, the moment you bond it to the underlying tooth structure, its mechanical properties increase exponentially, which is the reason why I personally have so much confidence in using lithium disilicate, not just for anterior aesthetics, but also for occlusal surfaces on posteriors, which undergo immense amount of occlusal loading. The other aspect that I enjoy about lithium disilicate is the fact that it can be fabricated as a monolithic restoration. Now, we all just heard from uh, Manisar that zirconia can be monolithic. Remember, Emax is also monolithic in nature. Now, zirconia can also be fabricated as a porcelain fused to zirconia. The problem here is it is a layered restoration. Although zirconia inside as a coping or as the core is very strong, the overlying ceramic is weak, which means the junction between zirconia and porcelain tends to give and the porcelain fractures. In my head, porcelain fracture means the case has failed regardless of what impact it has on the patient. In my head, I'm thinking, ye case ab fail ho chuka hai. Which is where a monolithic Emax, which is bonded to the underlying tooth structure, 
becomes a very integral part of my work. Why is this? Because it is monolithic and it is bonded. It does not have a weak interface, which means the possibility of it chipping or fracturing substantially decreases, which brings me to my third advantage. I can create very conservative preparations when I am doing my cases. Now, you know, full crowns, you've actually gone ahead and removed the strongest part of tooth structure, which is enamel. In my opinion, enamel should be present in the mouth, not in your suction. It's not supposed to go down the drain. It's the hardest structure known to the human body. So let's do whatever we can to preserve that enamel. And if you're talking about partial bonded restorations that are conservative in the preparation design, Lithium disilicate inevitably becomes the material of choice for such cases. All right. Very quickly, I'm going to share with you what I like to call the prosthetic menu. It's like the indications of Emacs. I'm going to list all of these indications first and then show you at least one case per indication as we move forward through the presentation. My presentation from this point on is purely clinical. When you go back to your practices, remember what I have done if you want to implement them. I'm not going to be sharing facts, figures. I'm not going to be sharing literature or articles. I'm purely going to talk about my experience with lithium disilicate over the past 12 years. So prosthetic menu for lithium disilicate, friends, includes... The most obvious, anterior crown, a single unit restoration, especially when the adjacent tooth you are treating has a lot of incisal edge effects. That's the halo that we see on the incisal edge. You want to copy that? That is where an Emacs becomes my material of choice. You can also very, very, very comfortably, without the fear of it chipping, breaking, or debonding, do posterior crowns. And I shall show cases to you. Taking this forward, you can even do bridges. You can do an anterior three unit bridge. Let's say you have a central missing. So you prepare a central and a lateral and you do a three unit bridge with a single pontic. If you have uh, two centers missing, can you do a canine to canine? Please don't do it. Single pontic, no problem. More than one pontic in the anterior, that's a contraindication. Can I do a bridge for posteriors? I can, but within limitations. That limitation is if I have a first premolar as my pontic, the maximum I can do is a three-unit bridge that goes from the canine, the first premolar as my pontic, and my second premolar as my terminal abutment. What I'm trying to tell you is on a molar, you can do a single-unit restoration. What you cannot do is a three-unit bridge. All right, so I, I hope I've made myself clear on that. Continuing forward, this is where Emacs becomes almost an exclusive material by itself because you can do aesthetic dentistry in a very conservative manner with the help of laminates and veneers. Taking this forward, something that I have resorted to extensively in my practice, that is posterior partial restorations, chip ceramics, Inlays, onlays, overlays, and something that I will present to you today that I love to do, which is an endo crown. And last but not the least, something that probably will surprise a lot of you here. In my opinion, in my practice, a full mouth reconstruction has maximum longevity if it is restored with lithium Di silicate, and this even includes patients who have parafunction, which means patients who are clenchers and bruxers. If they have underlying tooth, if they have enamel, I am thinking in my head, let me do a monolithic restoration which is bonded, not cemented. What is a fear with cemented restorations? It can de cement. Bonded restorations with enamel do not tend to de cement very easily. And if it's made of lithium disilicate, remember, it does not chip or break like a porcelain fused to zirconia restoration would. All right, so let's start off with looking at a case of an anterior crown. 
This is a young patient. When I saw her, she, I believe, was uh, 25, 26 at best. She had two PFM crowns, uh, and these were joints together. Uh, she didn't like the fact that they were too opaque. She had bleeding from the interdental papilla region, and the fact that these papillas and the gingival margins were receding. Why were they receding? I'm guessing probably some biological with violation issues at the time of tooth preparation. So what did we do? We sectioned these out, individualized them, and gave the patient Emax restorations, single unit Emax restorations immediately post bonding. Immediately. I want all of you all to have a look at how much better this restoration matches the adjacent as compared to the pre treatment PFM. Most importantly, is that inside the ledge halo, it just beautifully mimics the adjacent tooth. And that is where the concept of biomimetic dentistry and Emax comes into play. Also, you can see the interdental papilla has now started showing stippling, which means the papilla is becoming healthy. Yes, zirconia is biocompatible. Emax is equally biocompatible, which means around metal-free restorations in general, the gingiva seems to be very happy, which means anterior crowns are a big indication for the use of lithium disilicate. When we talk about posterior crowns, if it's a single tooth, feel free to go ahead. Here is a situation where, again, the patient had an old crown, there's some gingival recession, there's food lodgement happening incidentally, and the patient is having sensitivity-related issues. So once again, the crown is stripped off, and an Emax-based restoration is now bonded in its place, closing the proximal gap and creating a beautiful emergence profile with the gingiva. This was a case that was done with an Emax CAD block, which means a CAD cam restoration, which has been milled down from an Emax block. This is one option, although this is not the typically used option, because the most commonly used from a laboratory and a clinical perspective is the heat press technology, where you have ingots of Emax. Emax is not available like powder. You have ingots that are blocks of Emax that are heated, melted, and then pressed. If you remember reading uh, Anusavis, Skinner Phillips, yes, yes, yes. The first year book on dental materials, our favorite book, wasn't it? For lovely reasons. All right. But uh, remember, for Emax, we have the press technology. We have the mill technology. And uh, surprising as it may seem, very recently I read an article which said that the press technology, which if, if I may say at this point of time is cheaper than the mill technology, gives you a better margin seat, which means I am not concerned in my head about a margin fit compromise because it's not a CAD CAM and because it's fabricated by the technician. All right. So a posterior crown automatically becomes a indication for Emacs. Now, if I'm talking about a bridge, I have a case where it's not just an anterior bridge, not a posterior bridge, because it goes as a three unit from a canine. Uh, through to a canine, which is an over-retained deciduous canine and a first premolar. So if you can see, I've done preparations for the canine, which is actually transpositioned. It's in the place of the lateral incisor because there is an over-retained canine and then there is a first premolar. So I've prepared a three-unit preparation first, after which I go ahead and extract the deciduous uh, canine do some crown lengthening procedures. This is for a smile design case. And uh, what we did here is, again, a, a, a beautiful ovate design for a pontic bed. So what we do here is we create a small extension in the prosthesis that goes into the tissue and it creates for the most amazing emergence profile. Uh, it becomes very difficult, even to the trained eye of a dentist, to point out which is the actual Pontic. All right. So if, if you look at all of these prostheses here, starting from the left, the lateral is, is a laminate. The two centrals are laminates again. And this is a three unit Emax bridge where the canine is the pontic. And as you can see, the canine has a small dome like extension, which is the ovate extension that goes into soft tissue. Now, 
once all of these are bonded in, this is how the patient looks. Recognize the fact that we've converted the canine into a lateral incisor. And where you see the canine is actually a pontic, showing you a close-up picture of the same. If you look at the bottom right image, the one that I have highlighted, that is a pontic. Who would have ever guessed that is the pontic? See how beautifully it emerges from the underlying tooth, uh, from the underlying tissue bed. Remember, there's no tooth there because the tooth was extracted, right? But more importantly, in all of this is the aesthetics that it gives the patient. Uh, she came in for a smile design and what more than leaving her with a smile that she wants to flaunt around wherever she goes. The beauty of an Emax restoration lies in its incisal edge. And remember, that's where the youthful appearance of a prosthesis stands. Credits to some beautiful photography for this case goes to a dear, dear, dear friend of mine and an ace dental photographer that is Dr. Mayur Dawra. Uh, so this is where a bridge scenario, friends, can very easily be done with the help of lithium disilicate. Let's look at a laminate veneer where, again, uh, lithium disilicate almost universally is the go-to material. Here we have a young patient who comes in with concerns of diastemas, wanting to close them down. So very conservative preparations that are done. Remember, because lithium disilicate is a metal-free restoration, you do not need aggressive preparations to create lifelike restorations. Remember, there is no metal inside that needs to be masked. There is no opaque material that needs to be masked. The entire thing is glass ceramic because it is replacing enamel and mimicking the underlying tooth structure. And because of its translucent properties, Emax has the most bio aesthetic restorative effects as what we and our patients desire and deserve. Here is a look at what the laboratory sends me. This is some fantastic Emax work done by an ACE technician, Mr. Horace Savani, uh, who owns a laboratory in Surat by the name of Advanced Dental Lab. I'm a big fan of uh, his work, especially with lithium disilicates. This is crafted by the man himself. And once these are bonded in, believe me, your patients will look for every reason possible to smile, whether on camera or in front of a mirror. Aesthetic dentistry, friends, can be done best with the help of biomimetic restorations. And that's where lithium disilicate becomes the material of choice. The next indication and something that fascinates me. All right. This is conservative dentistry to the next level, friends. And here I present a case of chip ceramics from the lovely work of Dr. Siva Sankar, who happens to be a, rather I happen to be a proud co-speaker with him. I'm, I'm going to show you a post treatment result. Right. Have a look at this. This is from a, a, a left profile. I'm going to show you the post treatment results from the front profile. Right. This is when the case was completed. Right. Really fantastic aesthetics here. It is very difficult for the trained eye to quantify what is prosthetic. Now, let me amaze you by sharing with you the pre treatment situation. This is what the patient stepped into his practice with. Incisal edges are fractured, class four. And, and you have lateral incisors that are pegged with diastemas. Now, if my dentist were to tell me, I'll have to do crowns for this, believe me, I'm going to run away from that. This is a classic indication for conservative history. And in this case, this was done with the help of chip ceramics. These are extremely thin, fragile shells that are bonded to the underlying tooth structure with probably the slightest bit of bevelling, which means you are conserving enamel bonding to enamel. The possibility of these breaking or chipping substantially decreases. What is a slight concern? A slight concern, of course, is a stain at, that runs across the junction. But remember, if the patient were to take care of uh, a recall visit, it's just a polish. 
right? Uh, a soft flex disc run through, uh, a, a soft flex uh, spiral run through, and back to what it originally was. So chip ceramics, again, is, is a fantastic indication of conservative restorations. Let me tell you, feldspathic porcelain is best for chip ceramics. Having said that, I have seen cases where Emacs is also used for fabrication of chip ceramics in, in less than 0 0.3 millimeters of thickness. Absolutely amazing form of futuristic dentistry. Next, we come to posterior partial bonded restorations. Very quickly, I'm going to share with you a case of an overlay and then an endocrown. Inlay, onlay, I think is just a subset. If you understand the more aggressive ones, the less aggressive ones become an almost uh, easy replacement. All right, very quickly, let's look here. We have a patient who has a large amalgam restoration uh, and has started developing some sensitivity around uh, leaky margins. What I also want to point to is the fact that there is a lot of unsupported tooth structure remaining, which means if I were to go ahead and remove the amalgam and replace it with a direct composite, there is a high possibility that under masticatory load, unsupported enamel shells may fracture off. So often, the most conservative approach need not be the most conservative approach. So what I'm trying to tell you is don't always think of doing just composite restorations, but you may look at doing a cuspal coverage restoration. So we started off thinking in this case, we will go indirect. So what I did is I went ahead and first did occlusal reduction. I did not remove the amalgam first. I first started with occlusal reduction. Once that was completed to the desired extent, I now go ahead and remove all of the amalgam. You can clearly see there is a lot of secondary caries. Go ahead and remove all of that secondary caries. And remember, when you do this occlusal reduction, we were surprised to see these cracks that were present on the proximal margins as well. Now, remember, if your proximal margins have cracks, there is a big issue because this can result into a split tooth syndrome, a vertical fracture if not taken care at this point of time, which is the reason what you see here is we have extended the preparation into an MOD kind, right? But keeping as much tooth structure intact as possible. When we were preparing this tooth is when I realized the adjacent premolar also has leaky margins on both sides. It has an amalgam, it has a composite restoration, but there was a lot of peripheral caries around it from the proximal view. And that opened up to me only because I opened the proximal contact towards the mesial of the six. So what we decided was to restore the premolar as well with an indirect overlay restoration. On the premolar towards the distal, if you see, there is a whiter patch. This is immediate dentine sealing that was done with the help of some composite because the caries was extremely deep. This is where the concern was if we did this only and only with the composite buildup, it may succumb or fracture in time. This was... Uh, an NRI patient uh, who could not or would not want to go ahead with repeat dentistry in her uh, place of living. And because she was here in India with cost-effective laboratories and indirect prosthesis available to us, I think it made complete sense to give her a long-lasting prosthesis. So here is the final preparation that was done. Uh, these were designed CAD CAM. Uh, wax was milled CAD CAM. But then it was subjected to a wax burnout and a heat press technique. And these were the final two overlays that were given to me by the laboratory. First, you just go ahead and seat it there. All right. Here I'm showing you a seating trial. Remember, Emacs is a fragile material. You cannot place it and then have the patient bite down to check the bite. Bite checking only comes in after the bonding is done. If you want to think of it as a drawback, I would not hold you back. If you are confident of your work and your technician's ability of recreating what is desirable, Emacs will serve the purpose. As you can see here, individual restorations seat into the margins beautifully. What do I now do? I go ahead and bond them in.
This is one week post bonding view. I want all of you all to recognize how beautifully the margin of the prosthesis transitions into the underlying tooth structure. Remember, enamel is crystalline, Emacs is crystalline, and they merge into each other extremely beautifully. And more importantly, remember if you've used the resin, all right, it's not GIC. GIC dissolves, leaving a leaky margin that can cause secondary caries. This is bonded, it's resin. Resin does not allow any micro or organic infiltration, which means this is a leak proof margin. So Emax, which is glass that is replacing enamel and bonded in place, survives the test of time in individual partial bonded restorations. So that is the overlay case. If you look at it from the occlusal, it looks like a crown. Where does it differ? It differs in its buckle and its palatal presentation because the margins are far supra gingival and that's where conservation of underlying tooth structure steps in remember conventional crown and bridge dentistry requires stripping of the enamel so that you can get retention and resistance form we're not concerned about retention or resistance at all because we have enamel and bonding available which oversees our requirements for the cementation. All right, very quickly, let me present to you a relatively new concept and something that I am abiding by and enjoying success with it, which is the concept of an endocrown. What is an endocrown? An endocrown is simply preparing the occlusal aspect of the tooth like an overlay preparation, but not filling the core buildup area. Remember when we do an access opening, we've drilled through the center. So what you now do is keep the core empty. What you do is at the base, you may put some composite or GIC simply to block the orifices and create a smooth pulpal floor. But besides that, this central core area is not filled. All right. That is the periphery or the ring of your tooth structure. So you've done a flat, relatively flat, just follow the basic cultural anatomy, but make sure you do not fill the central core. Okay. What is the concept here? The concept here is if you have a flat preparation, posterior teeth are always under compressive load. When you're talking about a compressive load, a flat surface which creates a 90 degree angle is going to provide the best form of stress distribution into the underlying periodontia, which means a flat preparation without a margin is the ideal for these kind of situations. Can you see here? There is no retention or resistance form. I remember when I started doing these cases with uh, a laboratory technician from the early years, uh, in, in a very sweet uh, and, and, and a very polite manner, he once called me up and asked me, uh, sir, you do, you do these kind of preparations, but does the crown not slip off? It does not slip off. The reason it does not slip off is because there is enamel present. Remember, the area that is highlighted in yellow is the dentin. Dentin will give you a weak bond. Where does maximum bond come from? Look at that blue area, guys. That blue area, which is the ring of enamel, a 360-degree encirclement of enamel, literature says this gives you more than 90%, 9-0, more than 90% of your bond strength comes from here. Less than 10% comes from the central Dentin. So what does the prosthesis look like? Okay, uh, one, one quick tip here. Uh, when you are creating a flat restoration or a preparation, how do you protect the adjacent tooth from the nick of a bar? Uh, we used to put a matrix tip earlier. What I'm using here is something that I recently came across. It's called as the fender wedge. It's from Directa Dental. It's a wedge along with a matrix band. So what does the wedge do? It creates separation and the matrix band is held there by the pressure of the wedge. Sometimes what happens is we only put matrix band, but if you touch matrix band, it goes flying off. That fear is completely taken off in this situation. So I will strongly urge you to take whatever precautions are needed to make sure you don't hurt the adjacent tooth. 
but please work with a very good technician because you cannot do a die cutting in these situations because your proximal contacts are still maintained in enamel. All right, this is how the prosthesis looks. It has an occlusal dome and it has a umbrella-like extension that goes into the central core. And this is what a classic endocrown preparation looks like. You go ahead and follow conventional protocols and you bond it in. This is immediately after bonding, I'm doing my finishing and polishing. And friends, this is how it looks one week post bonding. Remember when you're working with an etchant, your enamel is going to look chalky immediately. So don't go and start trimming that off because you may be removing enamel away. I prefer to leave this the way it is, remove gross excess, call the patient the next day and then go ahead and do final adjustments because by then the enamel has rehydrated and it looks more lifelike, which means it, you know for a fact that this is enamel and this is not excess composite resin. All right, that is uh, the classic preparation. Uh, let me uh, quickly show you another procedure, which is again an endocrown as you can see here, but proximal contacts have been opened. These are cases where although caries was class one, but there was some amount of proximal decay or there was some amount of fracture that it would make logic, right? I mean, to cover that up uh, with your prosthesis and not leave it by itself. So this is a classic preparation. Uh, this is the central core that is uh, impressed. This is your, your distal wing. This is your mesial wing. Beautifully captured in this one-step impression using a triple shred, which is a big advantage when you're doing single unit posterior restorations like this. This is the final model. Here you can see the central core. And uh, this is the periphery of the preparation on a solid or an uncut model, make sure you always test your prosthesis here, all right? Uh, this is the prosthesis. Look at that central core. It extends into the central concavity and the small prong-like extensions, which are your class two extensions that go and engage the underlying proximal prepared surfaces. Uh, they can be very conservative. As you can see here, there's, there's uh, a bare amount of reduction done between a 1.5, I'd say a maximum two millimeters on a functional cusp. On a non-functional cusp, you can be anywhere between a one to a 1.5 millimeter. And believe me, bonded porcelain will survive. All right. Once bonded in, this is how it looks. Have a look at that tooth. You can barely recognize this is an overlay endocrown and not a full coverage restoration from this view. When I look at it from this view again, it just looks beautiful. The main area comes in towards the lingual or the palatal. You can clearly see my margin is far supra gingival. Look at that eight erupting, which means this is a young patient. This is a patient who's going to use this for a long, long time. The concern often comes up with terminal molars where the crown height is compromised. And, and if you were to prepare uh, your, your axial surfaces and do an occlusal reduction, your biggest fear is this crown will decement. Why? Because there is no height available. You don't have to do an axial reduction, friends. All you do is a little bit of occlusal reduction and an endocrown serves perfectly well for molar restorations. Please hear me right. I do this only and only for molar restorations that are endodontically treated. I have personally had failures with premolars because the underlying tooth fractures uh, because of a greater height as against the width of a premolar. So my suggestion to you would be, please go back and do these for molar restorations. Stay away from the urge of doing this for premolars. That was the wonderful world of endocrowns. And that brings me to my last case for today, uh, which is a full mouth reconstruction done in lithium disilicate with the help of conservative preparations. Here, here is a patient, friends, who's an extremely jovial man, but does not show a lot of tooth structure when he is smiling, which is the reason why he does not smile enough. Yeah, you can clearly see that there is a lot going on in his mouth. He is parafunctioning. Incisal edge to edge contact and incisal edge have been worn down. This is in maximum intercuspal position. This is how the occlusal surfaces look. 
There is enamel that has been lost. There is a lot of dentin that has been exposed. What is the concern with dentin exposure? It's going to dissolve and the height of these teeth is going to keep going down with time. He lost the premolar and a molar in the third quadrant. As you can see, this was from a vertical fracture because of the excessive parafunction that he was doing. As long as you have a peripheral ring of enamel present, try thinking of conservative restorations. These are, if you believe me, my final preparations. I want all of you all to recognize the fact that my margin is not subgingival. It is not equigingival. It is far supra gingival. As a matter of fact, for the anterior teeth, I've kept them in the middle of the tooth. Why so? Remember, this patient came to me with a low lip line. Even in his widest smile, he is not going to show the zenith of the gingiva, which means there is no reason why my preparation should follow the gingival margin. I can be conservative. Remember, a simple fact. The more supra gingival you are, the thicker is the enamel. The thicker is the enamel, the stronger is the bond to the underlying tooth structure. That is for anterior teeth. Have a quick look at the posterior teeth as well. The premolars are showing what are called as V top or veneer lay preparations. That is a buccal veneer and an occlusal veneer. But if you look at the six and the seven, these are pure occlusal veneers very commonly in the world today, called as stable top dentistry. Emacs becomes your enamel replacement for the worn occlusal surface. And here again, you can see a beautiful ring of enamel present at the margin. It's going to give you your bond. There is no reason why you need retention or resistance form. The key here is good laboratory technicians to work with. All right. Once again, this work comes to me from Haresh Savani from Advanced Dental Laboratory based in Surat. Go ahead and bond it in. All right? Beautifully bonded in. This is one week post. You can see MIP equals centric relation. More importantly, he came to me edge to edge, but I have recreated an anterior overlap that gives me the desired anterior guidance. I know a question that's coming to your mind. पेशेंट को चलता है क्या ऐसे आधा आधा दांत ये कलर का नहीं आधा दांत वो कलर का चलता है एब्सोल्युटली एस द पेशेंट हैज नो कंसर्न राइट हैव अ लुक एट हिम स्माइल इज ही शोइंग एनी अंडरलाइंग टूथ स्ट्रक्चर एब्सोल्युटली नॉट वी हैव टेकन एडवांटेज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट ही हैज अ लो लिप लाइन टू इंक्रीज द इनसाइजल डिस्प्ले एंड एट द सेम टाइम मास्क द अंडरलाइंग टूथ स्ट्रक्चर फ्रॉम बीइंग सीन व्हाइल्स्ट बीइंग कंजर्वेटिव and making sure we have predictable long term results emacs that is monolithic that is bonded to the underlying tooth structure friends becomes strong enough to withstand the occlusal load without concerns of prosthesis fracture have a look at him smile there is no reason for him to not smile the widest because he has now something to flaunt i want all of you all to look at the lower right six tooth lower right first molar you can clearly see the junction between the overlying porcelain and the underlying tooth structure that's a table top how would i have ever guessed a man who does not smile is going to show a mandibular molar when we complete treatment this is the gratitude and life changing experiences our patients go through when we treat them in a conservative manner I strongly believe in this statement friends aesthetics should not have to come at the sacrifice of conservation does this mean everything is hunky dory with emax and that i should start doing emax day in and day out na mehnat karni padti hai all right the primary effort comes in during the bonding appointment remember there is no try you you can't use your articulating papers to go ahead and check the bite at this point of uh, time you have to first treat the porcelain with a porcelain etch this is hydrofluoric acid what i'm using here is 10% hydrofluoric acid 10 seconds wash it away with water go ahead and put your 37% phosphoric acid 
for 30 seconds, wash it away with water. It takes away all the dissolved crystals. You now come ahead and put your silane coupling agent on top of it. This is how you treat Emacs. Emacs is delicate. It requires extra care, tender love and care, TLC. Show it towards Emacs. It will serve purpose in the patient's mouth. Very important in all of this is to use resin cements. You go ahead and etch the tooth. I believe in doing a selective etch. What I am using here is any of these dual cure resin cements. Either you use a U200 or you use an ultimate, uh, which comes in a clicker dispenser. These are from 3M. They are dual cure resin cements. So they bond to the underlying tooth structure and hold a restoration that otherwise does not have retention or resistance form. Remember, if you're doing this for anteriors, you don't use dual cure resins, but you use a light cure resin. So what I've used for this particular case is the Relyx Veneer Cement, which is a single syringe. Remember anything that's dual barrel, which simply tells you it's a dual cure. If it's a single barrel, it means it's a light cure in all of this. Remember one thing, today and for the times to come, with an increase in the risk of contamination and disease progression, rubber dam isolation is a key towards successful, long-lasting restorations. As I come to a close for my portion of the webinar, friends, Emacs, in my opinion, is evidence-based. There is years of literature to it. And it is experience-based because including myself, there are stalwarts in the world who believe in the role bonded Emacs restorations can play in the lives of a patient. Because remember, Emacs at the end of the day is crystalline and therefore is an ideal enamel replacement material. Enamel is thin, your restorations also can be thin and yet survive the test of Time. A quick thought, friends. With changing times, it is time that we also change how we think. It's time to think different. It's time to think conservative. Very quickly, friends, a lot of what I have spoken to you about comes from my heart, but more importantly, also comes from the book that I have had the privilege of authoring. It's titled Clinical fix prosthodontics, feel free to go on to mikdental.in and take a look at the same. Last but not the least, a big thank you to FutureDent for this lovely platform. To all of y'all who are watching me out there, I am sharing with you my personal details. That is my mail ID and my WhatsApp number, which are the two best ways to connect with me. Uh, as I now close my session, I, I announce the platform open to Q&A. Uh, with the last word saying, stay home, stay happy, stay safe. Dr. Samira. Thank you, Dr. Moyes. That was excellent compilation of a variety of cases that you used, uh, that, that you did with the lithium disilicate. Thank you, uh, thank now, you. Now, uh, I'll take some question and answers. Uh, Dr. Manish Agarwal, yeah, you are there? Yeah. I'm here. So, uh, 